Welcome to the Chaldean Cultural Center virtual discussion series. It is in collaboration with U of M Detroit Center, Unique Voices in Films, and CMN TV. Uh, sorry, we're a little bit late today. We had some technical difficulties, but here we are with uh, Mr. Sami Rasuli. Hello. Um, Hi, we am. Sami is um, in Minnesota, from Minnesota. Well, he was born in Iraq, though. Uh, he has a very fascinating history, fascinating background, and he's been involved in the Iraqi American community for many years, like literally in both of them. And he will share that experience with us. So Sammy, I would love, um, and, and one other thing I have to say is that we recently reconnected and I learned that we have been in contact with each other for over 15 years. That's true. Yeah, a long yes. time. A long time. And um, I'm so glad you, you progressing in your activities and you having this great show. Thank you. And I've had the chance, um, just from our email, some of them which you showed me recently, you've been very active, um, really in trying to bring peace and understanding and communication between Iraq and and uh, the United States. And why don't you share with us your background, uh, where you were born, and how this came to be where your heart and soul is placed into so much of this. And, and um, then we can go into the work that you have accomplished as a result. Well, I was born in Najaf, Iraq, and raised and grown up until about 25 when I decided to leave the country and the reason, of course, uh, back in the 80s, Saddam Hussein, our previous uh, leader, before the change that took place 2003, Saddam addressed the Iraqis in the 80s, I think uh, around, uh, yeah, around that time. So he said, if you're not with me, you're against me. And that uh, meant uh, he, his goal was to pacify the whole country. Uh, and of course, the Ba'ath uh, political party was very uh, strong party at that time when he took over. Uh, the idea was the motto of the ba bath means uh, by the way a renaissance or uh, go back again be born again uh, get back yeah born again uh, and what he meant or uh, michel atlak uh, who invented the bath party in syria in 1948 uh, they wanted to bring back the arab values that has been buried uh, with the recent time. And the uh, Arab values based on uh, getting all Arab together, the 22 countries, Umar Arabiya Wahida, to get all Arabs in one country. And their uh, motto was, uh, or the, the objectives were, Wahda Hurriya Ishtirakiya to unify the all Arab countries and having the uh, countries uh, freed, uh, especially Palestine, because uh, Palestine was and still occupied by the Israelis, and Ishtarakiya, the uh, uh, socialism, wanted all people to be equal and live. Uh, so anyway, when he decided to bathify and make all Iraqis uh, bathies, I felt uh, that country, Iraq, is not the country anymore that uh, I want to be, because I lost one of his motto uh, factor, which is freedom. I should have that freedom he talked about, and the freedom uh, was uh, that I have to choose what I want to be. But uh, leaving the country at that point wasn't uh, me uh, 
uh, against the bath or again, but was again that idea, that uh, single idea to, to be bathy or not. So I ended up in the US. I mean, uh, it was long journey. And uh, by the way, my father, when he w made sure I'm uh, determined to leave, he gave me a little object, little uh, flat object. Uh, he said, Sammy, scratch this. It was waxed. So uh, he said, scratch it when you feel like you're in different country or different culture. And at the end of your journey, this object, it was a mirror actually, uh, it should be uh, scratched fully. So when I ended up in, in, in the US, I looked at it, I saw myself. He told me, you will find, when you look at this object, you will find how the people look like at the other end. <laughs> it was very wise uh, and clever uh, uh, project by him to tell me that we all are the same. And that's what the Islamic culture based on unity, like people are the same wherever you go. You're here, you see Sami, you go to America, you see Sami, you go to uh, Europe, to South America, people are people. And, and, and that was uh, the idea. Then me getting involved in, in uh, peace uh, activities, right from Grand Zero after 9-11, um, Mr. Bush, Jr., the previous uh, president, also addressed not only the Americans, addressed the whole na uh, nation and beyond, the whole world. And he said repeatedly, can you hear me? And people say, yeah. And he said again, if you're not with me, you're against me. I don't know if you remember that. So I said, uh-oh, Saddam Hussein is still here. <laughs> it was ringing memories. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, so I felt, again, I'm not free in this country. And of course, there are many, many stories uh, happened uh, while I was uh, uh, in the U.S., for example, uh, in, in, in uh, September 12, 2001, like the next day of uh, the bombing of the Twin Towers. <clears throat> I was running Simbads. It's a combination of uh, Middle Eastern bakery, grocery store, and restaurant. Uh, at that day, I w did not want to open because I felt we are Muslims in trouble after what happened uh, in uh, New York. Uh, my wife, my kids say, no, you have to go and you have nothing to do with it. Uh, this is America and uh, this is uh, the land of the free. So when I went to the shop a little bit late, I opened the shop. Right after I opened the shop, a gentleman got in uh, with a blonde woman the man was uh, covered his uh, his head with a uh, american flag bandana so i said sammy you're in trouble <laughs> so the, they asked me about mehmet tea or coffee mehmet coffee if i have i told them yeah that means muhammad coffee the turk called muhammad mehmet so uh, he said he said yes i know i am turkish I looked at him and I told him, so what about that bandana? You scared me off. He said, for protection, man. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Then I, I noticed most of the Somalis in town start putting the American flag on their, uh, on their cars and also the pictures of George Bush. Anyway, that, that was uh, the beginning of my uh, journey to the West and ended up in Minneapolis, Minnesota, USA, as you asked me in the beginning. So recognizing, um, you know, these, the violence that has occurred and the wars that were perpetuated as a result, which actually it went back before 9-11 because of the 1991 war and the long sanctions that, um, so 
did this stir up the sense of like you having been born in Iraq, the sense of responsibility and a duty to kind of try to create that unity and to help people um, understand who Iraqis really are and their background. And, and also, by the way, I went, I visited Iraq in 2000 after having been, having left from there for like 20 years. And, um, and the Iraqis also have had a lot of misconceptions about us as well. And so I, I felt a sense of duty that, you know, on both ends, like I was, when I was there, I was trying to help them under, better understand uh, Americans because most of what they understood about it was what they saw on TV. And this was during Saddam's regime. And there was very, you know, the, there was no internet and it was very limited with, with the movies. They watch Rambo and things like that. Um, and so when I was here, I, ha I felt like there was that responsibility to to help people understand who Iraqis are. Did you kind of get that sense with you going back and forth like that and even just being born in Iraq? And, and you left at an older age too, so you had a bit better sense of it. Exactly. As I said uh, several times, many times when I'm uh, interviewed or ask about uh, myself, Sammy, uh, uh, make your mind uh, are you American or Iraqi? So uh, I tell my friends that I'm Iraqi 100% and I'm an American 100% and that makes me 200% human beings. <laughs> and the peacemaker... That's a good I percentage, think, Sammy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and a peacemaker duty, it's uh, more than to be American or Muslim or... Uh, uh, I mean, it's more than a religion or a land. It's uh, it's almost uh, you get to the angels and prophets' messages that they created from God to uh, build peace among communities uh, on 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 earth. So when I uh, started watching on the screen how much the toll death of Iraqis in, after the invasion in Iraq, that made me really sick and I couldn't take it because I was, before the invasion, I was uh, uh, contacted by group of Americans to be recruited to go with the wave of the invasion and be part of the operation and then whatever I want here, whatever I want to be, then the, the uh, American leadership will grant me. But I refused because I realized that was wrong and the result of it would be catastrophic. So, but I decided to go there in my own, not with the invaders, not with the project of uh, liberating Iraq, but I went there uh, not in a form of a fighter or war monger, but a peacemaker. And I wanted to uh, build a bridge to link both Iraq and the US and maintain the two ends of the bridge by coming back like a salmon go up the stream, but salmon never come back because they want to die at the place where they were born. I defied death in this case, but kept coming back. So uh, Sammy and salmon have common <laughs> ground <laughs> in going back, but Sammy and salmon don't have common ground to come back. I kept coming back, and uh, here it is. In the mainstream media here, Arabs are described as terrorists. You know that, historic, in, in the historic political uh, point of view, when the media talk about Arabs and Muslims. And in the mainstream Middle Eastern media, the Western are described as infidels. 
So I said, well, Sammy, there is a project for you to bring those infidels and terrorists together <laughs> and let them find out what they are. Are they really terrorists or infidels or the vice versa? So that's what I uh, uh, wanted to do by building that bridge. So many project we, projects we uh, uh, established and the latest one was English for Reconciliation, uh, was uh, it began in 2017, October 2017, and started up to until uh, uh, September 2020, when uh, the school was bombed and destroyed completely. This is so, just, Stanley, just to, to oh, clarify, my, because there's a, an article written about this. It's uh, you you called it there's a, a you called it the American Institute for English, and it's in Najaf, correct? Correct. Yeah, and it was in the news all over the news. I mean, yes, yes, uh, I saw across that. the country here uh, and and the rest of the world. Yeah, it was a huge explosion that destroyed the school that I run it, and uh, during the last four years, I invited many, many uh, brothers and sisters from America, from Canada, and the UK to come and teach and get uh, introduced to the Iraqi culture, uh, meet families, live with them uh, at least for one month, 30 days, free of charge, except you pay for your uh, plane ticket and many uh, Americans responded to this. So we got American guests, about 26 of them. And we got more before the school started as visitors. Uh, the Iraqi got excited, Iraqi men and women, young men and women, and uh, American, they love it. Some of the American guests. They stayed more than a month. They stayed three months and others stayed eight months. Uh, it, it was actually a celebration and, and everybody was happy. Uh, uh, we learn a lot, but unfortunately, because Iraq is not an unstable country, uh, as you know, uh, the general, Iranian general, Mr. Soleimani was uh, targeted and assassinated in Baghdad by uh, drones of Mr. Trump. And that led to more uh, retaliation by the Iranian militia, backed militia, Iranian backed militia in Iraq to target American and Western uh, establishments. So the US embassy in Baghdad, now it's closed, have been targeted many, many times by Katyusha uh, rockets and also uh, other places. So my school or MPT school, Muslim Peacemaker Team School was uh, destroyed as a target, legitimate target, because it, it called the American Institute. And the uh, perpetrators thought it has something to do with the uh, US establishment political establishment, and actually it's not, uh, the name is just the name. Uh, uh, it's, it's an academic place where we graduated many, many uh, Iraqis happily to be able to communicate uh, English. So the English guest uh, didn't, up, uh, didn't end up his uh, visit in school, but uh, students, Iraqi students started Invite them to take them home. Invite them to make for the makluba or. Yeah, I saw I saw some of the feedback from the the guests yeah. that you hosted, and yeah. uh, I loved reading their letters about their experience. You know, yeah. we had one person who um, I believe a woman that had uh, spent Christmas. She said, yes. She said Najaf. <laughs> yes, in Karbala. Yes, yeah, we, and then uh, yeah, and another woman also shared her experience and really spoke such so highly about you and was saddened about what had happened to the school, which um, from our conversation uh, I learned that there has been uh, a campaign to try to raise funding to try to rebuild it. Correct? 
we, yes, a group of American friends who, part of them, they came to Iraq and witnessed what we have been doing. They participated in the program. So what they did, they uh, actually uh, initiated a page for me to help me and my organization, Muslim Peacemaker Teams, to rebuild the school by raising funds at uh, GoFundMe white, uh, the, the website. We're gonna, yeah, we, we're gonna be sharing a link to that for anybody who wants to. And by the way, if anybody wants to learn more about the school, like Sammy said, there are a lot of articles that were written, especially uh, because of when it was bombed. Uh, but then we're also gonna include a link to the GoFundMe if anybody wants to support this effort. Thank you. So anyway, uh, it was real uh, an endless and continu continuous uh, celebration uh, of, of humanity when uh, Americans meet Iraqis and learn about them. And that's why I uh, invited Mr. Trump to visit Iraq uh, right after his inauguration to learn more about uh, Muslims before he uh, sign his uh, executive order to ban Iraqis and other Muslims countries. But then uh, I th he, he didn't uh, respond. He didn't come. I wish uh, one day he comes and, and visit us in Iraq. But uh, later he ex excluded Iraq from the list. They were seven, they became six. And now I think Mr. Biden <laughs> <laughs> excluded them all and that's good news <laughs> so and uh, i i watched some of the interviews that you have done and um you talk about your invitation to trump that you know he hasn't taken it up yet but hopefully he will uh, but you also um shared how people would be surprised that despite everything that has happened with the iraq and the wars and how much damage has been done because of these wars uh how hospitable iraqis are particularly to Americans. And I can say firsthand that after the Gulf War, and when I went there, it was during the sanctions. And it was like, af after the sanctions had been around for uh, um, almost like 10 years. So the country was very, very tired, but I could not believe the hospitality and the generosity of the Iraqi people in their most dire situation and their, um, you know, and, and it was where at that time, like $50 a month, this was like a, a right, you can like the whole, a whole family can live off of it. But you as a guest and you coming from, a, from America and they will literally like put all their um, money into just hosting you. It, you. The experience that you get, this is happens in most Arab countries, uh, I think. I mean, I've been around in a lot of them, but I'm saying particularly Iraq because of the fact of what has happened between us politically. This is incredibly true that their hospitality and their kindness um, toward Americans and what Americans, uh, most Americans are not aware of is that we've had a relationship with Iraq for, on a political level for over a hundred years. Over a hundred years, ever since you know the British entered Iraq. So this is an ongoing relationship and it's gonna continue for much longer because of, of the resources in Iraq. So, um, it's really an opportunity for us to learn about that culture, especially because what I'd like you to share, um, this is something we haven't addressed, but it's very important. Uh, you bring up the, the Iraq and uh, is a cradle of civilization, uh, Mesopotamia. So one reason maybe people feel well, aside from politically, what is our association with Iraq? Well, historically, there's a, a big connection between the East and the West because of, it's the cradle of, of civilization. Can you share a little bit about that? Well, <clears throat> uh, young men and women in this country, when they uh, join the college, first thing they do the orientation. <laughs> they go to this office, which is in charge of the orientation, a specialist uh, academic uh, uh, professor uh, or uh, a teacher, uh, ask the student uh, who wants to join this college or that college uh, about their interests, then they orient them. Orient means east. Orient them means put them on the side, not Kaaba, 
<laughs> neither Las Vegas, <laughs> but <laughs> orient them toward the east, to, toward orient, means where the sun begins to rise. And that means the correct direction. So orientation, I believe, where the holy land is, where the land we call it holy and known as holy, it's in Middle East. And experts, scientists, they studied long, deep, and heavily to find out what about this hospitality, why it's there, and what's the root of it. So somebody said, because it's a desert, and the people who live in the desert, if they don't share what they have, they just vanish. So they have to share what they have. There is nothing there except the herds of animals, sheep, goats, camels, and they have to share that in order to survive. So that sharing became a habit, then became tradition, and it, then it's called hospitality and generosity. But we should not forget our leader, the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ. Two, more than 2,000 years ago, he taught us about the hospitality and the generosity when he said, well, if you got slapped once, get the, the other slap happily. <laughs> and, the, and the left cheek. And the left so, cheek. And is that why um, you, I learned you named one of your children? Yes. My youngest son was born around Christmas, so he's... He's now Isa, and not too many Americans realize that Isa means Jesus. Uh, of course, in the U.S., they don't name people Jesus, but uh, in Mexico, they do. They do. They do call their uh, newborn babies uh, after uh, Jesus Christ. So uh, I try to make my house as a peace-living uh, little community that's built around it, a bigger community. So anyway, talking about uh, the unconditional love that came up with the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ, uh, it's, it's, it's an old message. It's an old lesson. Uh, we're still not learning it. Uh, anyway, uh, we go back to the generosity. In 2016, Gallup, Gallup, Institute, it's part of the UN. In 2016, they uh, issued a report that Iraq is the most hospitable country to foreigners in the world. So that was uh, an ideal gift for every Iraqi. And the Iraqi proudly, Iraqis, Iraqi people proudly talking about the only thing that wars didn't from them away, it's the generosity. Even if the poor, you said $50, uh, or people, they don't have nothing, they go borrow everything to enable to host their guest and to give them the best food, the best bed, the best place they have at home. And they will never ask this guest why you're here. And that sense, I wanted Mr. Trump to feel when I invited him, to live and witness. So generosity, as I said it many times, it's the highest form of nonviolence. So you cannot accuse or describe Arabs as terrorists. Terrorism is something uh, was created for political agendas to uh, take that rich resources, oil, away from them. And you have to sell your wars, you have to sell your 
agenda of occupation, killing those haji or an old woman carrying a basket going to the, to the market, or their kids carrying his backpack, going to school, accusing him to build this uh, um, bomb on the road when the uh, Hummer uh, or the American conveys roaming uh, the villages of Iraq during the occupation. So my job to bring the terrorists and the infidels together, and when they sit around the table and they look in the eyes, they speak and they break that piece of bread together, they found out they are only brothers and sisters in humanity. And they celebrate that moment deeply when they shake hands, hug, and I mean, I, I, I'm emotional now, but uh, I'm telling you, no, I was really, so for me, for me was survival. I mean, to do this, it's, it's a kind of remedy. Even last time I spoke to um, Jason Moon, who is uh, Iraq vets, we were both, he and I, in uh, uh, a round table uh, run by um, Dina Eccles of widening the circle program. Uh, Miss, Miss Eccles from <clears throat> Echo Valley Hope Farms in Wisconsin, Ontario, Wisconsin. Uh, she hosted us and I suggested because Jason has a trouble with the PSDT uh, uh, syndrome and many other uh, uh, Iraq veterans, young men and women have this uh, syndromes. So I suggested to create uh, Iraqi dating uh, a service where uh, a GI, former Iraq, G, uh, Iraq veterans, uh, marry an Iraqi woman and they produce kids. And this, I mean, with this, it, it would be a really a peaceful approach to get the people melted in that so-called melting pot, and then they start loving each other rather than hating each other. I, you know what? I, I, can, I think this would be one of the best um, projects ever thought of. Because that's our, that would it's be through, our- It's through love, and it's that the male and female coming together through love and yes. that kind of a unity. That is so beautiful. And I do hope that you do actually go carry on with it. Um, you, Cause you had mentioned so many times in your interviews, uh, it was discussed how much money was put into the, this destruction, the wars, the taxes that we pay on these kind of things. Um, maybe investing in a project like the one that you just mentioned. Uh, Very cheap. Dating, maybe that will be uh, well, not maybe, for sure that would be a million times more worth it and it would make uh, our world a lot easier to live in. We thank you so much for all your work for decades. I would love that um, in the near future, because I know you're gonna keep working and doing things and creating and building. So I would love to have you back uh, with any new projects. And sure. I really, we really honor you for all your work uh, that sure. you're doing to bring sure. two communities together. Well, thank you. Your program is inspiring, and I'll be glad to come back. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.